Hello there. In this video, let's understand deep seasickness or also called as dysbarism. So what are the objectives? What we are going to learn by the end of this video, we will have a brief introduction and we will learn what is called as compression effect or also called as the nat uh, nitrogen nat narcosis. Then we will understand what is the decompression sickness and then how do we prevent this. So let's have a brief introduction and try and understand the concept here. So what is the meaning of this word dysbarism? Dysbarism is any condition which is, which is resulting from changes in the ambient pressure. Okay, And we know that at the sea level, how much is the pressure? At the sea level, this is let's say the sea level, the pressure is 760 mmHg or it is also called as one atmosphere of pressure. Now let's say from the sea level, a person is descending down. Okay, For a descent of every 10 meters, I have gone 10 meters deep now what is going to happen or it can be considered as 33 feet deep what is going to happen the pressure is going to increase by one atmosphere that means at 10 meters how much pressure will i feel i will feel pressure of two atmospheres which is exactly double of what pressure i felt at the sea level now what is going to happen with the increase in pressure there is going to be compression of the gases and with the compression of the gases these gases are going to readily dissolve in the body fluids and the tissues understanding this is very very important <clears throat> so we all know that this is the deepest trench on the earth which is called as mariana trench and its uh, depth is 11000 meters or roughly 36000 feet so the people who are affected by this uh, deep sea sickness or dysbarism are deep sea divers the submariners or also the caissons workers that's why this disease is also called as the caissons disease so first let's understand what is this compression effect so as i have told you from the sea level, if I am descending down, what is happening to the gases? The gases are getting compressed and that is causing an increase in the partial pressure of the gases. Now, with the increase in the partial pressure of the gases, what is happening? The gases are dissolving more in the body fluids as well as tissue. So, we have all the three gases, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide and the nitrogen. So, it results in oxygen toxicity. It can also result in carbon dioxide toxicity. But the most important toxicity is what is called as nitrogen toxicity or it is also called as nitrogen narcosis. Okay. So, what is this nitrogen narcosis so nitrogen with increase in the compression and with increase in the partial pressure it is going to dissolve gradually into the body fluids and remember that nitrogen has got more affinity to dissolve in those tissues which are high in lipids so which are those cells or the tissues which are high in lipids these are nothing but the neurons because we know that maximum amount of neurons which are present in the central nervous system they are myelinated neuron and this myelin sheath is high in lipid we know that this is a very high in lipid so now what is going to happen this nitrogen is going to dissolve in these neurons which contain a very high lipid content so lipid content more amount of nitrogen is now going to dissolve in the neurons of the brain or the central nervous system so with more amount of nitrogen dissolving in the neuron this is going to cause alteration in the ionic conductance very important point so when there is alteration in the ionic conductance what is going to happen to the excitability that is going to cause a decrease in the excitability of the nerves so this is what is called as nitrogen toxicity or it is called as the nitrogen narcosis so this is sometimes asked as a short note so what is nitrogen narcosis or nitrogen toxicity so what is going to happen to the patient at 120 feet of depth let's say he has gone till 120 feet of depth he is going to have euphoric symptoms at 150 to 200 feet he will become drowsy he will have a poor muscular coordination but beyond 250 feet this is a very dangerous condition wherein the patient is going to become unconscious he will be insensitive to stimuli and it might also result in death so these are the important features which can occur in nitrogen narcosis now let's understand what is this decompression sickness so let's say the patient from the sea level has descended down and he starts to develop some symptoms because of nitrogen toxicity now what happens because of that symptoms he is he wants to rapidly ascend up to the sea level so this rapid ascent which is taking place to the sea level what is going to happen till now the nitrogen was compressed and it got dissolved in the tissues and the fluids now the nitrogen begins to decompress so once nitrogen begins to decompress it is going to escape from the tissue as well as fluids but at a very very faster rate so when nitrogen begins to escape from the tissues and the fluids it forms bubbles while escaping okay and these bubbles are the ones which are going to cause a lot of problem in the patient so let's understand what is that problem occurring so now the nitrogen is dissolved in almost all the tissues and the fluids so this escape of the nitrogen bubbles from the myelin sheet because i said myelin is rich in lipids and nitrogen is having affinity towards lipid and it has already dissolved in all the myelinated nerve fibers so now escape of nitrogen bubbles from the myelin sheet of the sensory nerves is going to produce 
pain in the joints as well as muscles. This is what is called as beds. Okay, it can also give rise to numbness because sensory nerves are involved. Now, let's say there is involvement of also the motor nerves. Now, what is going to happen? That is going to cause paralysis and that paralysis is what is called as diverse palsy. Sometimes what happens is this nitrogen as it is dissolved in the fluids also. So, these bubbles which are escaping out, they enter into the pulmonary circulation leading to a condition which is called as pulmonary embolism which results in dyspnea which is nothing but difficulty in breathing and this condition is called as chokes. So, it is a disease of we say vents and chokes. Vents is the pain which is occurring in the joints and the muscles. Chokes is the difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath. That is nothing but dyspnea. Sometimes these nitrogen bubbles can go and block the coronary blood vessels. That is called, that is, that may result in coronary ischemia and we can also have other neurological symptoms. So the thing what we have to remember here is there is something called as compression sickness which is occurring because of nitrogen toxicity and when the patient ascends very fast upwards there is something called as decompression sickness which is occurring because nitrogen is coming out of the tissues and the body fluids resulting in bubbles and these bubbles are the one which are causing all these problems fine so how do we prevent this condition one way of preventing this is using scuba scuba is nothing but self-contained underwater breathing apparatus one more way of preventing it preventing this condition is by use of breathing mixture which contains helium and low oxygen concentration and the best way is we should ask the person to ascend very slowly thank you